Hey y'all, uh, how's it going? It's your boy Kennard Lewis. We ain't in the flesh, but we doing it right. And I'm here today to talk to you about a topic that I feel many of us don't always understand the importance of, and that's that there is no thought too dark, no idea too grand to share. You might think to you, I don't know about that one, Kennard, because I got some ideas. I got some things that I want to do. But I feel people going to laugh at me because they think that I can't do it based on what I've been through, you know, or I got some dark thoughts and I don't think that they'll understand where I'm coming from and what I've been through. And I think both statements are, are real and they're probably true because people do judge. And there are a lot of people who are not going to understand what you're going, going through, who are going to think that you're incapable of achieving those goals. And that's fair. But at the same time, there are people. And maybe we talk about it with a therapist. I'm not saying we have to. I'm not, I know I push counseling, you know, because I believe in it. But at the same time, maybe it's a trusted friend. Maybe it's a trusted family member. It got to be somebody because there are thoughts, right, circulating in our brain that make the heart dark, that make the mind dark. And the only perspective that we have is our own based off of those experiences and traumas. And frankly, that's not enough. That's not enough to process what we've been through. Because if it were, we wouldn't be in this situation. It's hard to accept something that you're going through because it's painful. Because you know how people stigmatize certain experiences and think that, oh, no, no way Johnny can go through that. I don't think Sarah's capable of doing that. Oh, is, what do you got to be sad about? What do you got to be anxious about? Those same questions to minimize our feelings, to dismiss and invalidate what we're going through. It's hard to say to yourself, I got anxiety. I got depression. I'm battling through an addiction. I'm going through housing and food insecurity. I got some family traumas. That is hard to admit, but it's real. And I know many of us are suffering in silence. And I know for a, a fact that when those thoughts linger, they poison the body. They poison the soul. And we got to do something about that. We can't just let it fester. Who's to say somebody can't help us out? And I know we think that, oh, talking ain't going to help. There's no point. <laughs> you know, but what made you think that you know, a five-minute conversation was going to cure up five years, five months of that same thought that you've been battling through that you didn't want to accept. What? You can't small talk trauma. You, you, can't, you can't small talk depression, anxiety, all these addictions. You can't small talk that. That got to be processed. It, that, that takes time. And even on the other end, you got these grand ideas, got these grand projects that you're thinking about, these business ideas that you want to put forward. Who's to say that if you tell the right person that they can't take that idea and foster it into something bigger, who's to say that that business idea that you got can't actually help out the very people that you know you can't help out with? Who's to say, oh, I forgot, what's that perspective? Oh, yeah. It was our perspective, the one minimized and reduced by our own experiences, by our own failures, because we told ourselves a long time ago. And I know because I do it. I've done it. I've been in those situations. And it's hard. It's troubling. Now, again, these are not things to point fingers at. But I know for a fact that things can be done when we actually open our mouths and speak something, speak it into reality, speak it into existence. The reason why I say no thought is too dark, no idea is too grand, because when you actually put it out there, it loses its power. It loses its grip on us. It actually becomes tangible. It becomes something that we could actually achieve. It could become, it, it becomes something that we could actually process, that we can work through. You keep it in here, it gets locked in. It gets locked away, it starts growing, it starts festering, and it becomes us. And I know that you're not your depression. 
I know that you're not your anxiety. I know that you're not your addictions. I know that that food insecurity, the housing insecurity, all those traumas, it ain't going to be the last thing that you go through. Those grand ideas, they're going to be seen. They're going to be heard. They're going to be experienced because they need to be experienced. Can't keep it in here. You got to let it out. I know that's tough. I know you think it's going to go away or that it should go away after one conversation, but it doesn't. And even that's hard to accept. But if we keep it in, who gets to know? How do we get to grow? So please just understand that what you're going through is tough. Your ideas are grand, but don't, don't keep it to yourself. You don't need to suffer in silence. And you don't need to suffer alone because these things that we're thinking about are honestly smaller than we are giving them credit for. So thank you. And I'll see you next time.